I want to get right to Omicron. As you know now, the dominant strain here in the U.S., Dr. Fauci uh, now says it could account for up to 90% of all new cases by, by just next week. The CDC now warning Americans that we could see peaks that we haven't seen so far in this pandemic. I know just before we sat down here, the FDA has now authorized the first COVID pill, the first antiviral pill from Pfizer, 89% effective at preventing hospitalizations and death. The obvious question for you, Mr. President, is how much has the government purchased? How much is ready to go right away? We purchased several million already, but here's right away, I think it, don't hold me the number, I think it may be 20 million, but a lot of pills, all they can make so far. But you know, I hope we don't get there because if people get the shots, they get their two shots and a booster, they're not going to be in a position where they're going to need such a pill. Do you have any idea how quickly the American people will actually see these pills? How soon we're going to be able to get them to hospitals that are already seeing patients? The answer is I think it'll be a matter of a week to a, weeks to a month to get the pills, but it won't be enough to get to all the hospitals. We ordered a lot more of those pills. We now have to order millions of those pills. You told the American people just yesterday that we are prepared for what's coming. But three days before Christmas, if you look out across the country, you see it everywhere, these long lines, people waiting for hours outside in the cold just to get tested, to yep. be reassured before they spend time with their family. Yep. If you go to the pharmacy, we hear this over and over again, empty shelves, no test kits. Is that a failure? No, I don't think it's a failure. I think it's a, you could argue that we should have known a year ago, six months ago, two months ago, a month ago, I've ordered half a billion of the pills, 500 million pills, I mean, excuse me, 500 million test kits that are going to be available to be sent to every home in America if anybody wants them. But um, the answer is, yeah, I wish I had thought about ordering a half a billion pills two months ago before COVID hit here. But we're nearly two years into this pandemic, you're a year into the presidency, empty shelves and no test kits in some places uh, three days before Christmas when it's so important. Uh, is that good enough? No, nothing's been good enough. But look, we're in a situation now where we have 200 million people fully vaccinated, 200 million people fully vaccinated. And we have more than that who have had one shot, at least one shot. And they're getting these booster shots as well. Let me ask you about what Dr. Fauci said. I think it was a week ago today about uh, the so-called neutralizing antibodies. He said after two shots, it did wane over some period of time and that it was only after the booster that you got back into that protective zone. So are, are you talking about gatherings with people who are had both vaccinations, both shots and the booster? That's the safest thing you can do, both shots and the booster. Let me ask you about what you said on July 4th. You told the American people we're closer than ever to our independence from a deadly virus. Do you think you overpromised? No, we were closer than ever, but there's a lot we don't know. What would you say to some Americans who might say this feels like we're chasing Omicron instead of being ahead of it, fully prepared for it? Well, look, Omicron only really came on the scene uh, just before Thanksgiving. We weren't talking about Omicron uh, six months ago but it's just recent. And so we are chasing Omicron. But the fact of the matter is, you're chasing whatever comes on the scene that hadn't, wasn't there before. And this wasn't there this last summer, for example. The vice president said in recent days that, that you didn't see Delta coming, you didn't see Omicron coming. How did you get it wrong? <laughs> How did we get it wrong? Nobody saw it coming. Nobody in the whole world. Who saw it coming? I, 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 guess, I guess what I'm asking is scientists have long said that when you're dealing with the coronavirus, COVID-19, that there are going to be mutations, that most likely over time it is going to become very transmissible because this virus is trying to stay yes. alive, trying to survive. So did the administration not expect that there could be moments like this one where you'd have a highly transmissible variant sure, that's possible there, around the corner? It was possible. And it's possible there could be other variants that come along. That's possible. But what do you plan for? You plan for what you think is available, that is the most likely threat that exists at the time, and you respond to it. And I think that that's exactly what we've done. I know you're going to get together with, with the children and the grandchildren for the holiday. How will that work? Will you all rapid test before you're together? Yes. I'm doing it almost every day. <laughs>
And is your hope that for the millions of Americans who are trying to get tests yes. before the holiday that they'll be able to do? What well, you they won't be able to do it. The number of tests available, I've ordered a half a billion of them for the United States to be sent to every home. Everybody who wants the test can have one sent to home. And that's January, That's right? in January. And so will they have those rapid tests by, by when? By mid-January, by the end well, of January? Well, the answer is the expectation is be by the, the rapid tests will start going out in the beginning of January because they're being produced now. Let me ask you about what we heard from Israel overnight. They're already moving forward with a second booster now. So this would be the fourth shot for people 60 and older and for frontline medical workers. Is that something you're considering? I listen to the scientist. And I'm sure the scientists are paying very close attention to that. There may be a need for another booster, but that remains to be seen. So it, it remains a possibility? It remains a possibility. Mr. President, let me ask you about uh, just getting on a plane in this country. We're seeing millions travel home for the holidays, um, filling the airports and getting on these planes. Have you considered requiring passengers in this country to be vaccinated to get on flights? It's been considered, but the recommendation I've gotten is not necessary. Even with Omicron? even with Omicron. That's the recommendation I got so far from the team. Let me turn, Mr. President, to uh, Build Back Better. Many say it's an agenda in peril right now, uh, in large part because of uh, Senator Joe Manchin. You've met with Senator Joe Manchin a number of times. You invited him to your home in Delaware. He came to the White House a week ago. Uh, then he's on Sunday morning cable and says, I'm a no. Well, uh, look, how does that happen? How, how are you not able to close the deal? Well, look, let's talk about what we have done. We have passed more major legislation than anybody in their first year ever, 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 ever. And I haven't given up on this. I haven't given up on it. But Senator Manchin's main sticking point, it would appear, is the, the child tax credit. Are you willing to take that out if it means bringing him on board? Well, look, I want to get as much as I can possibly get done. It's extremely consequential. You know many of your supporters believe in order to protect democracy in this country, you've got to protect voters' rights. Yes. As we near the end of year one, nothing's been done. It's been blocked by the filibuster. Are you prepared to support fundamental changes in the Senate rules to get this done? Yes. What does that mean? That means whatever it takes. Change the Senate rules to accommodate major piece of legislation without requiring 60 votes. So you support a carve out of the filibuster for voting well, rights? The only thing standing between getting voting rights legislation passed and not getting passed is the filibuster. I support making an exception of voting rights for the filibuster. I want to ask you about something I asked weeks before the election when we sat down. Uh, you said you would absolutely serve eight years if elected. Do you plan to run for re-election? Yes. But look, I'm a great respecter of fate. Fate has intervened in my life many, many times. If I'm in the health I'm in now, if I'm in good health, then in fact, I would run again. And if that means a rematch against Donald Trump? You're trying to tempt me now. <laughs> sure. Why would I not run against Donald Trump or even the nominee? That would increase the prospect of running. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.